things that's been kind of, I'll just echo before we kind of do our um, a little prep work here, um, is uh, one of the things that has come to me from, from the angelic realm is that usually the angels that show up for us are the very ones that are the ones that are seeking to empower that quality from within us. So if Archangel Michael is showing up for you at a particular time, it's to not necessarily, I mean, we go through stages of evolution, but they want to usher us into being empowered to be the one that can transmute fear. And, you know, Archangel Michael being the one who's shown as slaying the dragon um, or the beast and really symbolic of transmuting fear into knowledge and truth and love um, without damaging or hurting anything or anyone. It's all about a transmutation process. Um, and so I've found that throughout life when, you know, Archangel Jophiel shows up, it's like, oh, the, that, those divine qualities of God that each of the angels represents are the qualities of God in me, and as you were sharing earlier, that we are all this. And, um, and to probably butcher um, what Marianne Williamson says is that our greatest fear is that our own magnificence that indwells within us. And how small are we, and now I'm moving on off of Marianne Williamson, even though I didn't quote her very well, um, to really cultivate those things within us and um, allow the angels to guide us and direct us until we are kind of embodying exactly what they are because we all have that power and that strength. And how do you do that has been one of the questions and cultivating that because um, everybody comes in at a different level. Some people are, I kind of always use uh, music as, a, as an analogy, some people are prodigies and they can just pick up an instrument and they can go with it. So some people are prodigies with angelic connections and that's all tied to past life experiences and how far we've evolved because this isn't the life. There's so much, there's a life of yours that is, of ours, that is so much bigger and grander that's actually happening right now that you can tap into. Um, but to really cultivate that within ourselves to have an inner strength um, that allows us to really have fun in this world. And so what do you do? Um, there's so much, and of course, being here at this expo, um, you're going to see things coming from physical well-being, mental and emotional and spiritual well-being, and um, to come in from a lot of different angles uh, makes it a lot more fun and a lot more easy. Um, and uh, as somebody who used to struggle um, in the early days of kind of getting clear um, and, you know, hearing a lot about having to um, connect or tune in or tap in. And it's like, well, how do you do that? Um, and definitely the ego wants a, um, a list. Okay, let me just check this off my list. Um, but really being in that place where you, A, as Stephanie was saying earlier, set the intention, um, call it forward, um, evocation is um, one of the most powerful ways um, to start the connection process to get out of our own way because basically we're just shifting um, out of our ego's awareness and into our higher awareness and that higher awareness that the angelic realm which isn't influenced by the realm of duality allows us to all um, have more of an awareness and there's a knowingness that comes with that. So as we do that, one of the ways, um, if any of you have uh, studied sacred geometry or maybe some forms of yoga or energy medicine, uh, there's certain activities that we can do both physically as well in, as in the stillness to cultivate that. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you as a way right now just to kind of maybe um, stand up and we'll do a, a stretch and an exercise. I'll explain it first um, and then we'll actually kind of do it and then just see how it is. And again, um, you know, as somebody who used to listen to people and watch things and people who are using sacred geometry or mudras 
or even mantras to do things, and then I'd be like, and people would be going, oh my God, did you feel that? Oh my God, the, ah, did you see that? And I'd be like sitting here like, uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was a psychic turnip um, once upon a time. <laughs> and, um, That's a new term and to me. And the way you, you know, bring about, um, I can't remember, it was, somebody on the panel had said earlier, we all have everything. We're all clairvoyant, we're all clairaudient, we're all clairsentient, we're all claircognizant, and we're even all clairolfactory, where we can see, feel, and know that divinity. But some of us have shut them down, um, and uh, without going into past lives too much, you know, if you've ever been persecuted for your clairvoyance, you might have shut it down, and you made a choice somewhere, mm -hmm. oh, if I can see, and I can r interpret energy, and I can actually see what's going on with my psychic abilities, I'm going to get killed. So you know what? Guess what? Shut it down, and I'm not going to have any part of that. And that was a choice we made, and you got free will and dominion over your life, and you can do that. So as we steep in these energies, we start to uncover some of the things that might actually create um, uh, obstacles. Um, and so that's where I was. I had obstacles that I had chosen. I had shut down a lot of my intuitive abilities, and it was all about uncovering them and starting to peel back and open them back up again. Um, and so in, in that vein, um, some of you may experience through this short little exercise um, something very profound, and some of you might be like I was a long time ago, and I got nothing. Um, but uh, hopefully you'll all experience um, something really great. I'm, I'm, I, have a, I have a really good feeling, actually. Um, so sort of if we can all just stand, just stand, stand, stand up. up. Seventh inning stretch, people. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if any of you are familiar with the human energy field, the aura, um, and how it kind of operates like a torus. And so the torus energy, if you can imagine a donut, is the energy cycling like this and it comes through so it's actually coming up around the outside of our body coming down from our eighth chakra which is up here down through all the different chakras down and coming back up and it should just cycle perfectly which allows us to really feel the vibrancy of our human energy field but a lot of us um, might have for one reason or another have little energetic blocks that uh, disrupt the flow. So if you could imagine um, your aura or your human energy field around you, that electromagnetic field of beautiful life force that's absolutely perfect flowing, and then the mudra that goes with it, this is a sacred mudra where if you just take all of your fingertips and you just touch them together, and this is just a way to activate and just breathe and connect with your human energy field, your aura and it actually kind of automatically starts to stimulate and activate it and for those of you who can see or feel you might feel the the pink around the outer edges and it starts to bring an alignment to your energy field and you might even start to feel that kundalini energy moving down through the center of your body and just allow your breathing wherever it's at to just become fuller and deeper you don't have to adjust it or make it better. It's just, it should start to naturally align. You might even feel the rhythm with your inhale drawing the energy down and your exhale pushing it back up around the outside. And as always, from a place of reverence, if you kind of take your hands and collapse them into prayer mudra, that just starts to connect and allow that which we could see as being isolated as just an individual with our human energy field. And if you could imagine now a beam of light rising up from your essence, your heart center, up the very center of your human energy field and connecting with the divine. This is what prayer mudra activates is that awareness of that pure divinity above. And to kind of solidify that, you just take and allow just your index fingers to stay pointing up and your other three fingers to fold down along the side. 
And this just starts to realign and bring a serenity into your energy field. And then from here, we just go ahead and we bring our hands back into prayer mudra and then open up our heart centers by bringing our hands out to the side. And for some of us, opening our heart centers can be a little tricky sometimes because it makes us vulnerable, but we want our hearts to be open. And this is a safe place of just pure divine love. And then very slowly, we just want to inhale and bring our hands up. And then exhale and bring them down the center of your chakras. And then inhale, bringing them up again. And we're going to just do this 12 times in your own rhythm. Inhaling up, exhaling down, eight hmm. it should be at about one more cycle and just bringing your hands back down into prayer position in front of your heart and then just shaking it out and allowing your energy field and your energy centers to just balance and feel that energy moving down through your feet into the ground. You want to be grounded, bring that divine energy through us. And then when you're, you're ready, go ahead and sit back down.